Hi, Mike from the Rural Montana family. It is winter time again. And with all that, we get all these winter time driving questions. Not just on EVs, on any car, but once you throw EVs in the mix, holy moly, the questions just explode. And not just the questions, also the opinions that people have. So, why don't we go for a drive? Before we go on the winter drive, let me point out some safety things that apply to every car, no matter if it's a internal combustion engine vehicle or an electric vehicle. You need one of those here. Before you start driving, you wanna clean off all the snow off your vehicle all the way around. Don't leave any snow on the vehicle. Make sure you clean off your headlights as well. Headlights nowadays are mostly LEDs. Don't generate as much heat as the old incandescent ones. And so the snow will not melt off. Same thing with tail lights. Tail lights are nowadays LEDs and don't melt snow or ice off. So make sure you get all the snow and ice off your vehicle. Now that we got this cleared off, we got to make sure that our windshield wipers are not frozen to the windshield. If they are frozen to the windshield, maybe use some de-icer or turn your defroster on so that they come loose. Because if you turn them on while they're frozen to your windshield, that can do some damage to the wiper. It even can come loose here on the mounting point and fall off. So make sure they're not frozen. Another important thing is right here, your windshield washer fluid. This is usually found under the hood and you wanna make sure you have enough fluid in here and you wanna make sure you have winter type fluid in there so that the freezing point of the fluid is way below the temperatures that you're expecting to have. In our case, we run winter type fluid all year long so we don't get caught with an early freeze in October and our windshield washer fluid is frozen. You will need a lot of this because your windshield will get dirty driving in winter conditions. Last but not least, you need four good ones of those. You need great tires for winter time driving. You need highly rated studless snow tires for winter time driving. Otherwise, you do not have traction, not just to accelerate, but also to decelerate. So as you're stepping on the brake with all season tires or cheap snow tires, you will lose traction. And this may end up in a disaster. Four highly rated, good quality snow tires are cheap insurance compared to having just a fender bender. Now the car looks ready, so now let's go for a drive. All right, now we're finally going on that drive. So you can see we got a little fresh snow, but the sun is up. Looks like a beautiful sunrise up there. So we love that for sure. Uh, right now it's 24 degrees. So it's way below freezing and uh, the news already said there's been a bunch of accidents, slide offs everywhere because, uh, well, mainly of the four black round things probably. That's one of the main reasons you need really good tires for this. And you gotta adjust your speed uh, for winter time driving. In the winter time you just, yeah, quite frequently you gotta go slower. So that's important, no matter what you drive. Even if you drive an all-wheel drive or a 4x4 or whatever it is, a lot of people feel super safe in a truck or SUV that is tall, 
but fact is they have a higher center of gravity and slide off and roll over much easier than a passenger car. So that said, we're going down the road here. You probably can see some of the shiny stuff on the road. That is either hard packed snow or ice. We don't really know, but it's probably slick. Uh, with our snow tires, we don't really have any traction issues. So now let's look at the differences of driving in winter between a internal combustion engine car and an electric car. So let's start with an internal combustion engine car. When it's cold out, they have a hard time cranking over. Sometimes they don't even crank anymore because the 12 volt battery is too weak to turn that engine over. And that's a big problem. And even if you can crank it, it may not crank fast enough to start. Sometimes it may just not start because it's too cold and the fuel condenses too fast inside the cylinder so it can be ignited and it may not start. We had this experience at 20 below in our Honda Accord, it would not start. And so it's a, a lot of strain on that 12 volt battery that's under the hood of a internal combustion engine car. On an EV, on the other hand, yes, you got a 12 volt battery as well, but we don't have that strain because we don't need to turn over an engine. We don't have to crank anything. All that battery needs to do is fire up the electronics. Once the electronics are fired up, we can get juice right away from the traction battery. That's the big battery you're sitting on. This battery will then power up the little battery as soon as we fire up the electronics. And so that battery, that 12 volt battery is not gonna die on us and we have no issue starting the car whatsoever. We're ready to go compared to an ICE car that may not go. Now with an ICE car, you may get it started, but it may not run smooth. You gotta wait five minutes or so until it runs a little smoother so you can actually drive. And even then you might start to drive and uh, it, it may not really go. You may have to go very slow and start to warm it up a little. It may sputter a little bit. All kinds of different stuff could be happening. With an EV, none of this. Once it's fired up, you get going, no problem. Yes, there may be a restriction on the maximum power you can use and there may be a restriction on regeneration, but with the road conditions, well, you don't wanna max out the power and you don't wanna max out the regeneration. Whoa, I don't know if you heard that, but our windshield is nicely frozen. <laughs> The problem is I have the fan turned down so that you don't hear all that noise. And so uh, the moisture on the windshield is frozen. So I guess we're just not using the windshield wipers right now. <laughs> all right, so anyway, once you get your internal combustion engine vehicle going and driving finally, you still have no heat. There is no heat in the car takes about 10 to 15 minutes before it starts warming up because you got to bring the engine up to temperature and that takes forever. In an electric car on the other hand that's no big deal. If you have a resistive type heater as soon as you turn the car on it, it takes like a few seconds and you feel the warm coming out. If you have one with a heat pump it may take a couple minutes, it may take two, three minutes before you get warm because the, the heat pump system has to build pressure first. So it takes a little bit longer, but not nearly as long as it does in an internal combustion engine car. So now the other option would be preheating. Well, you can preheat your uh, gas car. There is many that have a remote start key fob deal, so you can preheat it if it starts, right? And then you let it idle out there for 20 minutes or so to get it a little warmer. There's several issues with that. First of all, an engine that's idling and not being driven on the light load doesn't warm up as quick, which is not good for the engine. It's uh, rough on it. It's a lot of wear and tear on the engine. 
The other thing is, until an engine reaches operating temperature, none of the controls for emission are used at all on the engine. So during warm-up, a internal combustion engine is allowed to pollute no matter what. It doesn't matter how much. It's not looked at or controlled in any which way. And you usually do not get a check engine light until this combustion engine reaches operating temperature and if then there is an issue with the emissions you will get a check engine light but as long as it's not reaching that operating temperature it will not control the emissions it will make sure that the engine stays running which means it adds additional fuel and it's extremely pollutant also your fuel mileage is not so great i actually know exactly what your fuel mileage is while you're preheating your internal combustion engine car it is zero miles per gallon the car is sitting it's not going anywhere so it's zero miles per gallon it's the worst you can get now let's compare that to an ev well my ev i can preheat it really easy it won't have a problem to start and <clears throat> Uh, it will just use a little juice out of the traction battery, but very little. You might lose five miles of range for preheating it for 20 to 30 minutes. That's about it. And that's just because it's totally cold. So not bad at all. And if you actually have the option to leave it plugged in while you're preheating, like we do at home, our cars are usually plugged in. So we can preheat it and it will use power directly from the grid. So it will not even use any of the battery and my range will stay the same. So no problem whatsoever. And here is a little traffic. It's almost like rush hour. <laughs> uh, we hardly ever see cars out here, but uh, there is some even now. And uh, you probably could see here some shiny, and you can see here in the turns, there's some gravel. This is on a school bus route, so they come out here and plow in the morning and put a little bit of gravel down. But anyway, so now an EV so far has done much better than the internal combustion engine car. Now that we're driving <coughs> with both of those cars, let's say, um, well, does the EV still have advantages? Yes, it does. It does have a lot of advantages. So the EV can control power to the wheels much more accurate and much faster than an internal combustion engine car. An internal combustion engine car has a mechanical connection from the engine through the transmission, uh, through the axle or transaxle, whatever, to the wheels. And because I have a mechanical connection all the way through, I cannot control it as fast as an electric motor. An electric motor, I can take the power away in one split second and I can put the power back the next split second. On an internal combustion engine, as you know, if you take your foot off the gas and you step back on it, it will take a while until it comes back. So there are some control issues there. Once we step on the brake though, they're both the same, no difference. If I slam on the brake pedal on an electric car, there's no difference if I slam on the brake pedal on an ICE car. Um, it comes down to your tires. Both will have ABS and the ABS will do whatever it does, not much there. But with an EV, I could use Regen and slow down very lightly by not even touching the brake pedal at all. I can just feather my accelerator pedal a little bit and really slowly and I can pretty safely slow down with that. That said, if you got crappy tires, that won't work. You gotta have good tires to make this possible. So it's important that you run studless snow tires in the winter time of a high quality. Otherwise, yeah, you may be in trouble no matter what. But so there's one more thing an EV has a disadvantage on. 
and that is it doesn't produce any heat under the hood well you now say why would that be a disadvantage well actually there's two things first of all cabin heat you got to use power from your traction battery to produce cabin heat while the internal combustion engine produces so much excess heat that it needs to be moved away from the engine so this is excess heat that can be easily used to heat up the cabin without you really using much excess uh, it may use a little bit here and there depending on how cold it is it may use a little bit more fuel but that's not necessarily due to heating that's just to overcome all the other issues that an internal combustion engine has the second thing is the windshield washer fluid it's under the hood usually and the lines running to the nozzles that spray on your windshield are under there and the nozzles may be on the hood or they may be on the wiper arm depends a little bit but if you have an internal combustion engine that creates all that excess heat that will actually warm all that up and so this helps prevent freezing of the fluid in the reservoir the lines and the nozzles on the other hand on an electric car well sorry that sucks you're not producing enough heat under there so you got to make sure you have fluid in your reservoir that has a low enough freezing point that it doesn't even come near the temperatures you're driving in otherwise it is going to freeze real easy so those are probably the <coughs> excuse me those are probably the major differences between internal combustion engines and electric vehicles um, you might know more you have more ideas of what differences you have and what you should uh, pay attention to driving in the winter time so let me know down in the comments let me know what you experienced driving uh, with your gas car or your internal combustion engine car and what you experienced with your electric car if you have one but overall that said oh we're going downhill here and this is a very slick turn but i just have light reach and going right now i don't have to step on the brakes works perfect tires have great traction so anyway uh yeah let me know down in the comments what do you think about when the driving do you think evs are fully capable of when the driving or not um or do you want to stick to an internal combustion engine car let me know which one you prefer to drive in the winter time if you have driven both um, yeah i'm interested to learn more uh, from you guys to see what you prefer i definitely prefer the electric car <coughs> excuse me the electric car over a internal combustion engine car in the winter time it's it feel makes me feel so much safer and it's so much easier to drive in my opinion well in any event please give us a thumbs up if not for the video just for this beautiful sunrise right here and for the beautiful scenery you got to see while i was talking but in any event thank you for watching goodbye